John with RipeWave Audio back again with Denon's latest AV receiver, the AVRX 6800H, which is being introduced at $3,500. And we've been doing our series on this. This latest video is going to be on comparing the calibrations. And we're going to be doing this with measurements. Now, a lot of you have written in and said, you know, John, you're Reviews, they are very detailed. Uh, the comparisons you've been doing are a bit subjective, and I agree. And they are asking if we could do some measurements to go along with those uh, opinions that we have on the sound characteristics. Well, you asked for it, and here it is. We're getting back into measurements using REW to see how these compare. What I'd like to do first though, is just listen first before doing the measurements and get my own opinion that's not swayed by the measurements and see later if my opinions can be backed up by the measurements. If you've been following this series, we've been releasing videos both on this channel, RipeWave Audio, as well as RipeWave Express. And those condensed videos under 10 minutes are giving those summaries well, bits and pieces of content that you see in the full videos. This is a full video that we're doing and complements particularly part three that we did. And this was the review of the Dirac Live base control calibration, but it also complements part two where we did the Odyssey calibration. And we just made those calibrations. We showed you how we did them, some tips and tricks around that what we didn't get into was how was the results on those calibrations. And that's what we're going to do today. As you know, Denon has released their latest receivers as well as Marantz with the capability of working with multiple calibration systems. Now, Odyssey is built into it, but Odyssey does have a few options. It has its mobile device app, which is $20, which gives you a little more uh, visibility and control over what's going on. And then their um, Malt EQX software sells for $200, which gives you the most control over the Odyssey calibration. And then of course the Dirac Live, and we've talked about this in the prior videos. The Dirac Live room correction is available in limited bandwidth and full bandwidth. And then they have the base control that just came out December 23. And we're testing it for our first time, available in single subwoofer or multi subwoofer. Of course, you'll need first the Dirac Live room correction if you're going to add the base control option to it. So you'll actually need to buy both licenses, one of their bundles where you can save about $50. The active room treatment art calibration is not yet available for these units. So let's get into the findings. And before I show the graphs, I want to talk about my experience. Of course, we started with the Odyssey calibration. When I first powered it up and started listening to some music on my 9.2.4 system. So we're using front wides now. And we have our two subwoofers, one in the front, one in the rear. And we have our two rows of ceiling speakers. And when I went to listen to this, I said, this is odd. I'm hearing a lot of information behind me and to the sides. The balance was much different than what I've experienced before, even with my Cinema 50. Uh, so the way it got calibrated uh, for the Odyssey by default, put a lot of emphasis on the back of the room. In fact, the vocals or the, the dialogue seemed a lot more distant than what I'm used to hearing. And I don't know if you've experienced that as well. Of course, we have our Cinema 50 that didn't express that. So I went back and reset the levels that were set by Odyssey, decreased particularly those rear speakers, which were uh, really a lot louder than I thought they should have been. So with that done, the other thing that I was noticing is while Odyssey sounded good, it was lively. It uh, had a lot of uh, spaciousness, if you will. But I didn't think that was coupled with clarity. 
it seemed a little bit muffled. And when I compared listening to the Odyssey calibration next to the Dirac uh, calibration, I would go back and forth using that option button on the remote where I'd use the web page, which I could quickly switch between speaker preset one, which was Odyssey, and preset two, which was Dirac, and hear the differences. And it seemed like with Dirac, discern the words more clearly. Even some of these background noises, like in Pink Floyd's Dark Side of the Moon, when you're hearing the announcer on the airport, the guy's running through the airport, and you hear the announcement, you could pick out what she's saying a lot more clearly than with the Odyssey version, although I thought the Odyssey had a little more life. Now, I later recalled, I turned on Dynamic EQ as part of that setup assistant that we did with the original Odyssey calibration. And so with that Dynamic EQ, I think that's what gave it a lot of its liveliness. Uh, but whether I turned that on or off, uh, I didn't gain any more uh, clarity there. So taking that next step to actually measure to find out why I was hearing what I thought I was hearing was very necessary. Now, the other thing that I did, because Dirac didn't seem to be as lively on the bass end, I explored raising up the bass in a couple ways. I did it first by doing it within Dirac Live itself. I could elevate the target curve for the lower frequencies, and a very simple bar to raise there. And then I also loaded in from a text file the Harmon curve for various increases in bass. And so I'll get into that as we go. But those were a couple of things I did because I did feel like out of the box, the Dirac one was a little too flat for my liking. I wanted to have a little more on the bass side. So what I've done here is I set up my UMIC one attached to REW and going through my Moto M4 uh, DAC, I could run my sweeps from REW into the Denon through AUX2 and see how this really performed as calibrated. So the first thing I did was if you select the preset with Dirac or a preset with Odyssey, you have the choice of the filters. And with Odyssey, you can actually turn it off as well as DRAC, which you can turn the filters off. So that's what I did as I turned the filters off to start with, because I wanted to hear just the results of setting the distances and the levels and how this Denon unit really sounds with an REW sweep. And this is what I found. Now these are two different amplitudes, but it looks like whether we had it on DRAC with the filters turned off, or Odyssey with it turned off, that seemed to trace pretty much the same profile, albeit it seems like Odyssey had this bigger dip at 34.1 hertz. So it seems like they're starting from the same place. The next thing I'm going to show you here is with Odyssey. So going from Odyssey off to Odyssey turned on with Malt EQ XT32 in reference mode. And this is what I defaulted it to after going through the setup assistant. And you can see the highlighted plot here. What that has done to went from the purple plot where Odyssey was off. And you have this huge dip that happens around, let's say 70 Hertz. And I thought this was quite curious because that wasn't there before Odyssey even did anything. Uh, although it did have that, that dip at 34.1, which seems to have smoothed out a bit. So you lost one, but you gained another. Uh, and on the high frequency, it didn't seem to do so much. It was mostly on this lower end. Then what I did is played with a different setting. So we went to, instead of reference mode, going to flat and turning dynamic EQ off and on. So both these plots here are with Malt EQ XT32 set to flat. And dynamic EQ in blue is off. And in the brown highlighted color, it's on. And you can see with dynamic EQ, it raises up that bass uh, considerably. But then on the higher end, 
it's nearly not much different. Uh, it's mostly the same as the, when the dynamic EQ is turned off. So most of that is happening on the lower end, let's say up to 80 hertz, and then it kind of gets back on track with the rest of it. Now, of course, you could see different results. Every room is different. Every speaker is different. These are the results I had in my theater with my speakers and amplifiers. Just as we had done with the flat, I next looked at it for the reference uh, target curve and with dynamic EQ on and off. And you can see the results, the difference here. The highlighted plot is with dynamic EQ turned on. Again, I see a much more pronounced uh, dip at 80 hertz, uh, enough of a dip to be you know, concerned about. Now, I was curious with reference and flat, if we compared those both with dynamic EQ on, it really didn't see a difference. So uh, apparently when you put the dynamic EQ on, it um, isn't really considered flat anymore. Uh, it's doing its thing. Uh, and you no longer really have a flat response. Then I turn my measurements to direct live. So the plot that's green here is with direct live off. And when you turn direct live on, this is the basic direct live. This is the highlighted chart here that's kind of a reddish color. And you can see the differences here that it's making it a little more flat on this response. Now the next chart is very curious to me because when I went to play with Dirac Live based manage, this is where we're setting those crossover points in Dirac Live. It could be that I could have done a better job at manually choosing those, but I find that the chart here uh, is going to a less favorable position uh, with the base manage versus the standard day Dirac Live. So it, it looks like I've taken a step backwards by adding in the base managed in my particular calibration. Then I compared with the base control. So looking at this chart where we have Dirac Live in kind of a reddish color, the base managed in a greenish color, and the Dirac Live base control in a highlighted purple color, we can see base control is much more flat than the other two and on paper looks the best. Now comparing all these Dirac ones to the best Odyssey plot, we can see that the Dirac does look to be a lot more in control, now, you know, particularly the base control one, but even the others, uh, the one that looks maybe more closely resembles the Odyssey is the base managed uh, version and the green plot. And then just focusing down on what I thought was the two best, which was the base control for Dirac and then the Odyssey XD32 uh, plot that we had here. Dirac to me is putting out better results. And these are confirmed with the way I was listening to it. It was clearer, it was more articulate much more precise uh, than, than what I was getting from Odyssey. Now, the next thing I wanted to do is make up for the lack of bass that I, I felt I was getting from the Dirac. So one way you can do this is they have these bars that you can raise up and down. So by default, it was set to 1.5 on the bass end. And I took that and raised it up to four, but I also took it and raised it up to 10. And I save those to different filters and recorded the results and here is the output of that result. So the at 1.5 and this is what we were showing before, it's kind of that lighter shade of purple. The darker purple at 4 dBs, uh, that's the highlighted value and then 10 dB increase uh, is in the lighter blue. And I felt that the 10 dB increase when I was listening to it was a little overbearing. It, it, I started to you know, lose kind of the clarity there because the the, boat, the base was overwhelming. I, I thought the 4 dB increase uh, was just enough uh, over that initial of 1.5. Uh, so I think I was willing to go to four, but not to 10. The next thing I did was 
tried importing a target curve with a text file. I found target curves that are the Harman target curves, which is what a lot of people prefer is the way Harman has done their target curves. And so I was able to load this and you can choose the group of speakers you want to load into. I loaded into all groups. So I could have chosen a 4 dB, 6, 8, a 10 dB, but I focused on the 4 and the 10 because that's what I was doing the other method. And when you select your target curve, now the first one here is the uh, 4 dB increase. It looks a little different than when you raise up the target curve right from direct live. But if you're doing these import, you have all the values that are coming from that input file uh, superimposed on the graph. And then the results for that 4 dB with REW doing the measurements in my room look like this. So the green line is with the 4 dB using the Harman curve. And then the purple graph is if I just increase it using the target curve built into Dirac Live. And notice we get that much more of a bump uh, around 15 to 20 hertz that you don't have on the Harman curve. So it looks a little more in control than the Dirac Live curve. And then of course the same thing with the 10 dB increase with the Harman import. And then we go to measure that against the standard Dirac methods. We can see again, that bump that DRAC puts in there between 15 and 20 hertz is not present in the Harman curve that we loaded in. So putting these all together, one graph, you know, my favorite DRAC live base control with the 4 dB Harman curve, which is the green highlight, that's my favorite one, the Odyssey results, as well as the standard DRAC live for those who are not buying the base module. And you can kind of see here, I would say that any of the DRAC versions are more favorable than the Odyssey. I say this, I did still have enjoyment with the Odyssey calibration. I thought it was lively. I just thought it wasn't as clear and articulate as what I got with the DRAC. And particularly when the base control was put in, when I added, that 4 dB bump, it was close enough to what I was getting dynamic EQ. And I thought at times the dynamic EQ in Odyssey was a little too much. You know, with these loudness controls, it can be a little overbearing. So what are your thoughts? Have you done some experimenting like this? What were your results? I'd like to see how it compared to what I, my findings here, even if you're not doing such a test with REW, uh, your ears are telling you a story. And are you finding the same things that I am doing? Or do you have some preference to what Odyssey is doing? That feedback would be useful to the RipeWave audio community. And if you enjoyed this video, please like and subscribe. And if you want to take your involvement to the next level, we do have a Patreon channel at www.patreon.com slash RipeWave. Of course, you can give us a one-time donation by hitting that thanks button. And that's enabling us to grow even faster on this channel and bring more exciting content to you. But of course, it doesn't cost you a thing to hit that bell notification so you're informed when the next video is posted. Until then, keep evolving your audio experience.